Hey everybody, it's Crystal Ann Compton. How are you doing today? I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. My hair is a little crazy. Sorry, after this I'm gonna go get a massage and so I'm not gonna like fix up my hair a whole lot and then go have oil in it and stuff, but this is who I am. And I'm coming at you today excited because we're gonna be talking about animals and I love animals. Not just because animals are great and they're fabulous companions, which of course they are, but also because when we are with animals, we actually partake in the essence of who they are, and that's really, really high vibration. So I'm going to talk to you about how animals actually help us to shift and to expand our consciousness. And we're also going to be talking about animal reincarnation when animals pass and cross that rainbow bridge. They often actually come back to us, not always in the form of the same kind of animal. For example, a dog can come back as a cat, but they do very commonly come back and stay with us. I'm going to tell you why this is, because a few years ago, I actually asked Spirit about it, like why? And I got some interesting information via inspiration and channeling. But before that, before we talk about that, I want to talk about my animals, mainly because I had a viewer ask a question about them, and I thought it would be a great opportunity to just share a little bit of my personal life with you. This question comes from Myri. She act she's actually asking three questions here. We are just going to deal with the second question, and Myri, I will come back and answer the other questions as well, because they're very good. And also, hi, Myri. You've been to the Bliss Retreat. I love you so much very, very much. In the middle of this comment, she says also, how old are your Great Danes? And do you see yourself always owning just Great Danes? So this is a great question. I'm going to answer the second part first. Do I see myself only owning Great Danes? The answer to that is no. I will say that I've had a heart for Great Danes and other giant breeds before having my babies now. Um, and when I lived in Chicago, I rescued Newfoundlands and I also rescued St. Bernard's and there was Foster's and I got them adopted out. And I've just, I have a heart for large and giant breed dogs because I think people think that they are so cool and really want to own them. But then when they get them, especially as a puppy and they're so cute, when they start growing, people don't really understand what they've gotten into. And so as your dog is getting bigger, it's pooping more, it's eating more, it's a bit destructive and having a little destructive Chihuahua is different than having a little destructive Great Dane or St. Bernard. They got bigger teeth, they got bigger mouths, they can do more damage, uh, they cost more generally. And they're also, if you don't train them the right way, they're, they're hard to handle and can be disruptive in a family. And so giant breeds and large breeds are often relinquished first to the pound or to rescue and they're beautiful beautiful dogs you just have to know how to love them and how to work with them and so while i have this big heart for large dogs i i have to acknowledge that you know i'm getting older <laughs> just if I, this summer at some point probably in august i had let the dogs out of their yard because they have their own separate place to to play and to, to have fun. And I had let them out to bring them into the house and they just start zipping around. They get the zoomies, the yayas as I call them. And Koa just inadvertently crashed into me. Koa's my oldest dog. He didn't mean it, he was just running by me. But I had a bruise that was like this big on my calf and shin. And I ended up going to the doctor uh, just a routine thing and she saw my bruise and she asked me if I was safe at home. <laughs> She's like, are you safe at home? I'm like, yes, I just have big dumb dogs. And so I think we'll probably get more Danes, but the next time we get more Danes might be the last time we get more Danes because there's obviously a lot of other dogs that need love. I love boxers. I love mixed breeds because they tend to be um, a bit more stable <laughs> mentally it's easier to train it depends um so no i'm not going to just stick with great danes although i do love them and i i can't imagine having any other dogs than the dogs i have now now to answer your question about their age so we have three great danes one girl two boys the youngest is sunshine this is sunshine let me show you her pretty face oh my god love it deep dope pretty She's a brindle, as you can see, um, and she's got a big old tongue. It just lolls right there on one side of her face. That's her daddy. She doesn't love anybody more than she loves her daddy, Jeremy Compton. She is 
going to be five years old in December, so she's almost five. Then there's my middle son. His name is Ku, K-U, named after the Hawaiian god of war. And of course, he's the most docile, sweet, and sensitive young man that I've ever met. He's just so great. In fact, the veterinarian speculated that Ku was potentially developmentally delayed. Just a bit, he's a simple boy. And, you know, dogs don't know how big they are or how small they are, which is why you have a bunch of chihuahuas just barking and making a racket and then you have bigger dogs just submissive. Koo is submissive and um, this has gotten him into a little bit of trouble which I will touch upon in a, in a moment but that's also Jeremy and they are staring at the sunset. Next we have Koa. Oh Koo by the way is six years old. Six. So sunshine's five. Koo is six. And then Koa is seven. So five, six, and seven. I'm showing you this picture of Koa first just to give you an idea of how tall he is because my husband is 6'3", 220. He's a big Texas boy. But Koa is just as tall as him when he stands on his hind legs. He's just really tall. Koo is our biggest in terms of brawn. He's about 160, whereas Koa is probably about 130. But he's, he's still big. This next picture is funny to me. <laughs> I see it, I laugh because, did you ever see that movie Insidious? That horror movie uh, Insidious. So there's that scene where they're like at a dining room, they're at the table and a camera is panning around and it pans to the father and then right behind the father is this red and black demon just lurking there. This just picture just, <laughs> I don't know, this picture reminds me of that movie and I just find it very funny. And so I'm sharing that with you. That is Koa and Sunshine doing her part as the demon. Next we have Jeremy and Koa just staring into each other's eyes. So in love and I don't get it. I don't get it. Don't these dogs know? that I'm the one, I'm the one who took care of them. My husband for years traveled every single week, like Monday through Friday, sometimes Sunday to Saturday. Like I was always on my own taking care of all these dogs, <laughs> feeding them, watering them, bringing them in, taking them out, making sure they had everything they need, taking them to their vet appointments. I mean, it's been me, but Jeremy Compton, Papa Compton walks on water with these dogs. They just adore him. And that's a picture of Koa just sending him all his love through his eyes. Next we have Koo and Sunshine. I love this picture of both of them. This was in Parker County when we had the five acres and they would just run the property. All three of them would run that property. It was like w watching wild horses just zipping across the fence line, running into the, the bushes and just having so much fun. And then we moved into this house and we don't have five acres. Five acres was too much for me, especially since I was alone so much to take care of. And plus we didn't have internet. So now we live in this other house and they only have half an acre and they just don't get the same amount of play. And since we've been in this new house, Sunshine has started attacking Ku. Like Ku will get up to move and she'll just get out of her bed and she'll attack him. It's been pretty traumatizing because it it only has happened since she's about four years old. It never happened before. And Ku, again, is very simple and very sweet. And every time it happened, he just kind of sunk into himself more and more and kind of tried to skulk away, didn't want to be a problem. <sighs> and so with dogs, it's like children. You have to manage the relationships. You have to make sure you're in charge of the entire pack and they understand what their roles are. But now when Sunshine and Ku are in the same room, they have to be separated. So that's, that's kind of a sad development that's happened in the last year and a half. And I don't blame Sunshine for it. Here she is, she's so beautiful. And when she's one-on-one -on -one with just me or just Jeremy, she's, the, she's more sweet than Koo. She's so lovey. She's such a good girl. And of course, here she's so pretty like her mama. Oh God, she's so pretty just like your mama. But um, I don't know what it is. And uh, so we're just, we're managing it and we're taking care of it. And we've taken her to see specialists and things and hopefully it sorts itself out. Last picture of my babies. There you go. There's the youngest sitting on the middle. 
she's five, he's six, and there's Koa looking back, and he is seven. These are my animal prides and joy. I just love them so very much, and they bring me that joy, and this is kind of what I want to talk about. Even when, I, when I'm up here in front of you discussing them, my vibration starts to raise because I've had so many beautiful experiences with these dogs. Not all of it has been easy, obviously, but the animals come to you exactly as they are, and they offer themselves into the relationship with you with such innocence and purity. And if you have an animal who has not been, for example, neglected or abused, and unfortunately so many of them have been, but if you have an animal who hasn't sort of been through that trauma, it's just pure, beautiful vibration. Animals encompass Gaia energy. That's all they're made of. They're made of this beautiful earth energy. And that earth energy is so much higher in vibration than all of humanity. It is so, in in fact, uh, Spirit told me once that Gaia or the earth's essence is archangelic. It's not It's not just a guide for us. It's not just a mother for us. We're talking archangelic, super high vibration. And our animals carry the same signature of the earth. And so when I'm down, for example, depressed about something, feeling let down, I go and make a point to play with my dogs and roll around with them and just hug on them and feel and absorb and take in their beautiful energy, which again, they offer so freely in innocence. By just being with our animals, we raise our human vibration. I don't know how many of you out there have read the book called Power vs. Force by Dr. Hawkins, David Hawkins, I believe. Um, And he also wrote The Eye of the Eye and and really great books. But Hawkins was all about calibrating energy, measuring energy, and then scoring energy. And you'd have to read the book to understand. But I think the highest energy he scored was Jesus. Like Jesus came in at 1,000. And I think Buddha came in at 990 or 1,000, as almost as high as Jesus. And then there was something like America. (laughs) I think America was like 220. And different parts of the world were also calibrated and different people were calibrated. The reason I mention this, though, is that he actually calibrated a dog's wagging tail and a cat's purr. I think the consciousness of humanity was somewhere in the, the upper 100s to lower 200s, but a dog wagging his tail was like 600. And a cat purring was like 600, so much higher in energy than how we experience our normal day-to-day lives. And this is why animals are such a blessing to us. And it's not that we use them for their energy. It's that we co-create with them by being with them. They take a little bit of who it is that we are, our essence for themselves, and we take theirs and it's powerful. And so if you have an animal, know that that animal embodies earth energy. That animal is a blessing, truly. I also wanted to talk about animal reincarnation, this idea that animals pass and then come back to us. I believe this is true. Of course, we have a bunch of movies coming out now about this, which I find to be so curious, but I believe it is true that your animal, if you have that deep soul connection with the animal, the animal passes, of course, crosses the rainbow bridge, but at some point will reconstitute in the form of another animal and come back into your experience. And I noticed this for many years, in fact, a couple of decades, I would notice that one animal would cycle out of my experience. And in about a year, a year or two, another animal would cycle in and would have very similar characteristics to the animal that passed. You know, animals have quirks, just like humans do. Koa has a quirk of one like little funky ear that he has over his eye and he'll watch you. Koa has a quirk of of how he runs around and how he plays. Koo has his quirks. He's, again, very submissive, very simple. And then there's Sunshine, who has her own traits, of course, as well. But for example, with Koo, Koo, I believe, is a Newfoundland. (laughs) He's a reincarnated Newfoundland that I took care of, not even for a long period of time, but this Newfoundland left a real impression on me and taught me great lessons about myself. This was a Newfoundland that I rescued named Noah, and he would 
he would always hide behind a chair and he never wanted to interact with people. He Somebody had hurt Noah, but it was an opportunity for me to learn how to love him in a way that he could receive it. And he cycled out and years later, here comes Ku with the very same nature. And the thing about my dogs is, well, Great Danes are, are kind of fraidy. Generally, they, they, they can be quite timid and all three of my Danes are, are timid. Um, and Ku is no exception, but the in, the way in which he's timid, the way in which he conducts himself, he'll hide behind chairs or he will seclude himself. He's very quiet when he comes to, he sort of dips his head. Nobody has ever laid a hand on any of my dogs. Are you kidding me? <laughs> they gotta be kidding me. Nobody ever would. These dogs have had the best life since the moment they came into our lives. And so it's just odd to me how he would have the same mannerisms of a dog that I knew and loved that had been traumatized. And because I learned to love Noah, I have Koo and I know how to love Koo in this way. Koa, again, my oldest dog, is a lot like a dog I had before named Moose. And he's also a lot like Koa number one, who was an Akita that we had many years ago. But there are so many traits in this koa that I've had in animals from before. And noticing this throughout the years, I at one point took this to spirit and I asked, do animals reincarnate in the form of other animals who re-enter your life? And the answer I got was a resounding yes, but it was even more interesting than that. What spirit told me was that our animals are actually part of our soul complex. What's a soul complex? A soul complex is our I am, our soul essence. Our animals are actually part of that. They're part of us. They are us. Just as if I hold up my fingers in front of you and, and you see them, you know, oh, those are Crystal's fingers. These belong to me. They make up who it is that I am. Are they the totality of me? Of course not but they're useful, they're helpful, they help me to experience my life, and they are a part of me. Animals, quite similarly, are a part of who it is that you are, and they're here to help you experience life to the fullest. And if we partner with them and experience them and have relationships with them at the highest level, they are or can be our greatest teachers because they know what we need to learn. And they've come here to facilitate that for us. And so it is very common that they will pass and then come back in the form of another animal. And the way that you know is you pick up similarities in their traits, in their quirks, in their personality. And a little bit of a word about animals who have been damaged or animals who have been neglected. There is spiritual resilience in all of us. So many of us have been traumatized in our lives. Many of us have been abused. I know that I was. And yet I had spiritual resilience. There was this, this voice inside of me that inspired me to continue to grow, to learn, to lay down the things that no longer served me and to move in the direction of my ultimate life and what I wanted to do and what I wanted to experience. Well, in the same way, our animals have this spiritual resilience. You can take an abused animal, a Noah, if you will, and you can love them back to wholeness. Well, let me rephrase that because they're not broken in the first place, but you can bring them into that state of balance where they can be exactly who they are. Like Ku gets to be exactly who he is, but there is a balance and a wholeness about his experience. They are resilient. They do bounce back. I have to tell you this story about the St. Bernard that I rescued many moons ago in Chicago. His name, well, I named him. I named him Augustine because there was just something so noble about him. And he had lived with his mate in a barn uh, and, I, and I think his previous owners were very elderly and they weren't the original owners. They would like rescued these two Bernards, but they were too old and couldn't take care of Augie and his mate. And so they just kept him in the barn and they took food out from time to time. And so they, they did their best, but the dogs themselves were neglected. And so I heard about this and of course I opened my house up for Augustine and he came at night, it was like eight or nine, eight or nine in the evening, and he was with his mate. 
And so they had to, you know, they took Augie out of the back of the truck and, and I took his leash and we talked and we did all the things that we do in rescue. And then they left, they took his, they took his companion and I was with Augie on the front yard and I had my leash and he just howled. He howled and cried when she left. It was so beautiful. Um, and I took Augie in <clears throat> and at first he was nervous and wary. I had other big animals and didn't know about us and hadn't been around people, you know, but we just loved him and opened our heart to him. And my daughter, she was young then, she would play with him. And he just grew into such a beautiful member of our family. But, you know, in rescue, you, you, you end up fostering them. You make sure they're taken care of. And then you start adopting them. And um, I just remember when the people came to check out Augie, I just knew they were going to end up adopting him. And there was that window of time where I'm like, I should really just keep Augie because I love him so much. <clears throat> but so did they. And, of course, I ended up. Uh, we ended up adopting Augie out. Um, but even though he only spent a few weeks with me, he changed me. Just seeing how they love like we do. And they need love like we do. Oh, didn't mean to get emotional. My animals need love. Your animals need love. And they bring love. That's what they bring. And it's beautiful. And it's helpful to us to learn how to love so purely like that, without attachments, without like expectations. Oh, I will love you if you do X, Y, and Z. Then I will love you. Or then I will be worthy to receive love from you if I can do X, Y, and Z. See, this doesn't happen with animals at all. Animals just come to you 100% with who they are and offer themselves to you. And it can take a little while, but it's beautiful <laughs> when that connection is made. And again, they often come back for that very reason, because they're here to teach us how to love and how to be love in this world. And oh, if we could be as beautiful in our heart as Augie, the Saint Bernard. Well, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. It's a little different from me sharing some of my personal stuff, but this is a subject that I love to talk about. Please like, please subscribe, please share, and also please comment. And if you have any stories about your animals, or if you have an animal that you think is reincarnated back into your family, I want to hear about it. I read those comments. Until next time, you guys, I've got nothing but love for you. Bye, guys.